Okay, um, coming back to what Rahul just shared, um, yes, I know Rahul from a few years before, and I was part of um, Women's Symposium a few years ago. I didn't come as a speaker, but I came as a sponsor because I also run a beauty studio, just nail it, down the corner actually, and um, um, I felt so honored to be part of Up Your Game. And I saw all those inspiring speakers, and I just watched them. And I thought, wow, these ladies have a voice. And um, it's just like a flashback, actually, because now sitting here, I want to ask all of you, actually, I don't know if you, went, if you are going through or went through the emotions that I went through a few years ago, sitting and watching all these speakers. What I felt was, um, let me ask you guys a question. Do you feel at this point that you're somewhere in your life where you feel you're not living a very fulfilling life and you feel that you could be living a more fulfilling, more fulfilling life than you are today? How many of you feel that? Thank you. And how many of you feel that the place that you are in now, presently, you feel that um, there's someone in your life holding you back, maybe a parent, um, maybe a family member, maybe your spouse, maybe your children. How many of you feel that there's someone holding you back? I felt all those emotions and it wasn't too long ago and Rahul has just witnessed to that as well. Um, this was maybe, I could even say I was still feeling that two years ago. I could even say that if I go back and look at myself a year ago, I can't recognize myself anymore. And so, because of that journey, because of what I experienced, because of that transformation, I felt like I'm in a different journey. I may be doing other things, I may be playing different roles. How many of us are mothers here today? A lot of us, yes. So I felt the journey that the, the place that I was living as is I was living through a label. I got married six years before, and ever since I got married, um, I changed my last name. Not only did I change my last name, I changed my entire life. I changed where I was from to where I came to, a, different, a completely new different country, in a completely different new environment, with completely a different set of family members. And along the way, I actually felt um, I became a box of expectation. And who put me in that box? Nobody can put you in a box unless you put yourself in a box. And I didn't even realize I was inside a box. I literally became a box of expectation. I became, um, three months down the line, I was pregnant. So very soon after I got married, I gave birth to a beautiful daughter. And seven months after giving birth to my first daughter, I gave birth to my second daughter. So it was like back to back. Along the way, I completely lost myself. I just knew that I was working on being the best mom. I was working on being the best daughter-in-law. I was working on being the best wife. And I also had my own parents, so I was still maintaining my relationship and wanting to be the best daughter, being the best sister, and being the best for everyone. What about Julie? What about me? I totally forgot myself. Um, so it's funny because I was in that box for a long time. I felt that the circumstance, the environment, and the situation that I was in wouldn't allow me to come out of that box. That was what I felt at that time. But the best part of it is I didn't even realize I was in a box. It was, if I can clock back, it was literally one fine day. It was my birthday, and my husband said to me that, where would you like to go for dinner? And I said, mm, I don't know. Where do you want to go? And he's like, it's your birthday, it's your day, where would you like to go for dinner? I said, I don't know. And I was really blank, I didn't know what food I liked anymore, I didn't know what I liked to drink anymore, because I made everything about everyone else. Oh, my kids like to eat this, I'll eat that. Oh, my in-laws like to eat this, I'll eat that. My husband likes to eat this, I'll eat that. And I really became that person. So far along the way, that when I was asked, what do you want to eat, I really had no idea. And that shook me. And I reflected on that because he was actually frustrated. I was thinking he should be blessed. He's got such an easygoing wife. I mean, you should be like, you know, wow, you know, I can eat wherever I want to eat on every day, even on her birthday. But he was frustrated and I didn't understand why he was frustrated, which I'm grateful he was. 
because that made me go down the road and reflect. And I realized that one second, I need to find Julie. I, ran, I, I started my business actually um, after my, um, I felt that my daughters were a bit more um, manageable and I felt that I wanted to start something small where I could kind of focus on my business and my children at the same time. So I started running a beauty bar which was very close to home so I managed both. And along the way actually the discovery to my business was a small discovery to myself. So sometimes we're so much in that box and in that environment and we feel that we can't get out of it but just push yourself out. Get out of the norm, get out of the routine, get out of the ritual, do something different. Whether it works or it doesn't work, something will come out of it. It's like what Devi mentioned, she just put it out in the universe. Honestly, that's all I did. I felt that I was stuck in this box and I just knew I wanted to get out of the box. How am I going to get out of the box? I have no idea. So I just put it out in the universe and said, I'm going to start something small. I don't care how small it is, but I'm really going to start something small and it can be whatever, but I need to find something that's going to get me out of this zone, that's going to let me find Julie in the process. And that's when I discovered Just Nail It, my beauty bar. Um, and I took over that business and I started running it. Along the way, I met a lot of people. Exposure to people is good. So obviously my clients and people I interacted with and whoever I interacted with along the way would say, oh Julie, you're so beautiful. And how many of you think I'm beautiful, if I may ask? <laughs> Thank you. But do you know what? Honestly, I didn't feel beautiful. It was a very strange feeling. Um, I, I mean, along the journey, I, I met a lot of people and they would somehow compliment me, you look so beautiful, and I didn't feel beautiful. I felt so empty. And I would admire people with a voice. I would admire people who could share and, you know, be true to themselves. And I would be envious of them and I could feel like, I, I felt like I couldn't speak. I can't believe I'm amongst all of you talking today. I hope I'm clear and understandable. <laughs> so, um, it's so strange. Um, this is very deep to my heart. I mean, I hear all your stories and I feel that no problem is big or small. The reason I say no problem is big or so small because a lot of us go through so much. And when I was sitting there earlier before Devi came on, I was like, wow, all these ladies, I mean, some of these ladies went through a lot. But actually it's not, like one of the speakers mentioned, it's not, um, everyone's problem is different. And everyone, everyone feels for their own problem. You will never understand somebody else's problem unless you're in their shoes. So there is no problem that's big or small. It is what's your, what you're feeling at that point. So what I was feeling was a sense of emptiness. I was a woman who was very confident before marriage. I was a woman who was outspoken. But along the way, because I chose to stop loving myself, I chose to stop giving importance to myself, I completely lost myself. From a woman who lived out of faith, I completely was living out of fear. Fire. So. That was so powerful, I mean, what you shared as well, Carolina. Thank you, because I completely resonated with it. So it's so important that whatever it is in your life, when you have fear, make fear your friend, face your fear. Because if you start feeling fearful and living out of fear, it's the worst thing that you could ever do to yourself. In my, in my experience, when I started living out of fear, I lost myself, I lost my confidence, I lost my identity. I actually felt completely empty. There is no point looking beautiful and not feeling beautiful. I'd rather the reverse because I feel that's more powerful. And what is powerful about feeling beautiful is that how many of us feel beautiful today? Yay. So when you feel beautiful, you'll love yourself. And when you love yourself, it will radiate outwardly. And what will happen is you will look after yourself. So eventually you can create beauty. So, coming back to my box of expectation, the greatest discovery was to find myself out of that box. And we, a, a lot of us are born with a lot of limiting beliefs. Either we are born into it, or either we are programmed along the way. And what happened to me is, I thought I had zero limiting beliefs. Until I lost myself in the journey and I adopted a lot of limiting beliefs along the way and I lived a life of fear. Along the way I'm grateful that I experienced that because now I've lived two lives. 
one life out of faith, one life where I felt I had maybe very limiting beliefs, and then the other life being in the same body where I lived out of fear and where I was full of limiting beliefs. And being able to witness both lives, I'm really, really grateful because I feel this is my journey, this is my path. I discovered my passion and purpose. And I discovered my belief in where I want to share this with the world. I want everyone to know that you can't, you're not stuck in, you're, you're never stuck. If you're stuck, it's because you're in your own way. If there is a problem, there is a solution. It's how you deal with it. Some of us feel, oh, okay, let me ask you guys this question. When you see a big problem or any sort of problem in front of you, what's the first emotion that you feel? Anyone? Fear? Frustration? Thank you. Overwhelmed? Thank you so much. and Appreciate the involvement. Um, that's what happens. And when you feel all these emotions, are you able to solve the problem? You're so stressed in the problem that it takes you longer to solve the problem or maybe you feel and you have magnetized that the problem is so big that you can't solve it and you just put it under the rug. But I learned this from one of the mentors of the mentors. How many of us know who is Dalai Lama? Most of us do know that he is some sort of a spiritual master. So the mentor of actually met Dalai Lama and it's the first time that Dalai Lama took a pen and paper because this is what he had to share with Dalai Lama. And I think it's so powerful, and I take it close to my heart now, that when he sees a problem, he feels happy. And I would like all of you, actually, to take a mental note of this, because this changed my life. It's all about programming your mind, like how Carolina mentioned as well. When you give birth, somebody tells you it's painful, you imagine pain. So if you see a problem, imagine happiness. Why? Because when there is a problem, what do you do? The first thing, you look for a solution. When you find a solution, what happens? You feel a sense of achievement. And when you feel a sense of achievement, what happens? It raises your self-esteem. And when your self-esteem is at its peak, you're happy. So every time now I see a problem, I'm like, yay, happiness, because I know that this, by the end of it, is going to raise my self-esteem and it's going to give me that form of happiness. So. When you start solving, you, um, you master your problem, that's no more a problem. You become a, a master of problems and you start actually enjoying problems because you grow along the way with it. And this is something I wanted to share with you. So basically, it's about how you rewire your mind, how you reprogram your mind. Carolina took you into the journey of um, the Guyanese office. I would like you all to visualize what happens when the baby is born. <laughs> So when the baby is born, if you think about it, does a baby have any fear? A baby is born fearless. If you put a baby into a swimming pool, the baby can swim. So this is something that we all have forgotten. Along the way, we are all born fearless. Along the way, we are all born limitless. Why did we become fearful? What happened in the journey? Maybe along the way, some programs were installed. Your environment, your family have told you certain things, or people that you have been exposed to have put all those fears in, in, in front of you. Are they working for you or not for you? We're not talking about what's good or what's bad. There is no good or bad teaching, I believe, because we're not here to judge. But useful or not useful? If it's not serving you, uninstall those programs because you weren't born with it. So it's, it's just about every time you find yourself lost, I think visualize a baby. Visualize how you were born into this world. Visualize how you came into this world. Visualize the creator who brought you into this world. Visualize whichever God you believe. Because by programming and living in that fear, you're actually not honoring if you believe in God. God if you don't believe in God, then yourself, you're not even honoring yourself if you're living by those programs that have been installed with on you because they're not written on gold. If they're not serving you, uninstall them. And this is my journey actually along the way where I found my path through a few mentors that I've crossed paths with and blessed, been blessed with is that in my master classes, I teach people how to rewire themselves 
how to reprogram themselves so that they could live a life of limitless potential, so that they could live a life by design and not by default. When Rahul asked me, I said, what am I going to speak about today? What do you want me to share with the audience? He said, talk about empowerment. How many of you are here to be empowered? It's great, I'm here to be empowered too because I feel that the journey never stops. But what happens when we leave this room? Yes, we feel awesome, we feel great, we feel like we're on fire. And then when you leave that door the next day, fear creeps in. So the journey of empowerment, you can't, I can't empower you. It's only you who can empower you. We may come here as facilitators, but at the end of the day, the choice is yours. So please choose faith over fear. Choose empowerment. Make the right choices. Live up to your choices. Honor yourself. Prioritize yourself. Because if you don't honor yourself, nobody will. If you don't love yourself, don't expect anyone to love you more than you can or will ever love yourself. To share a little bit about your mind and the power of your mind. 95% of our thoughts of how our mind works. It's actually with our subconscious mind. And 95% of it is our subconscious and only 5% of our thoughts are conscious. And how much of our thoughts are we using most of the time? Are we using the subconscious or the conscious? Conscious. So we are only using 5%. And what is the 95%? All the programmed, installed that may not be serving us. So can you imagine what kind of life are we choosing to live? A, a life by default or a life by design? How many of us would want to live a life by design based on our terms, of con terms and conditions, based on what we deem as successful and not based on other people's perception of success? I'm going to share you two powerful things about the mind. The mind listens to everything you say. The mind does what you tell it to do based on what you command it to do and based on the pictures that you visualize in your head. I would like to share an activity with you all, if I have um, two minutes, Rahul. If I can ask all of you to stand up. Thank you. So we're going to use our um, left hand and point it forward, just like that. Put all your strength in your left hand and move it as far as you can away from your body. Okay, ready? Now see, as you move it as far as you can, where does it stop? Just mark that. I'm sorry because there is limited, limited space here. You can try the same activity at home, but we can try what we can right now. So if most of you who got the space, remember where it stopped. And let's put our arm forward and um, close your eyes just for a few seconds. And just visualize that arm that you shifted earlier. Move a third further. Don't move it. Just visualize it. Move a third further than where you moved it. Visualize that all your arms are like jelly and you can really stretch it a third further from where you, where you last left it. Just picture that. Tell your mind that you're going to move your arm a third further. Don't move it yet. Just tell your mind that you're going to move it a, a, a third further. Now open your eyes and take your arm forward again. And before you move it, tell your mind that you're going to move it a third further. And visualize that you're this jellyfish and you can really go a third further. Now move your arm a third further. I would like you all to practice this activity at home so you can see the power of the mind. And thank you so much for the time.